sweet jelly of mine. There's jam everywhere. It's a crime scene. Until we arrive at the closest station and a proper investigation has been concluded, we are obligated by law to preserve its integrity. Huh? Who are you two? We hoped it wouldn't come to this, but we are detectives. How did you... Oh, it was rather obvious. The way you were so secretive about your occupation and destination. The documents. The hushed whispering. At first, I didn't know what to make of your intentions. But soon, the facts added up, and it became clear who you are. Detectives on a mission! And detectives always come in pairs. Even the sight of old Jolly's body didn't startle you. And at that very moment, my theory was confirmed. Remarkable. I would expect less from a writer of such great renown. Yes, Linza Cookie. Your theory was indeed correct. Now, I would be lying if I said I expected such an incident. But one thing is certain. The corporate is one of us. Naturally. After all, there is no way of escaping from a running train. Could have. It is very likely that the culprit committed this gruesome crime in the period from midnight to 1 a.m. How do you know that? Macaroni cookie, if you will. The state of sugar granules scattered on the floor indicates that the incident happened around midnight. The dropped watch over there stopped between 12 and 1. Which means our victim here engaged in a physical confrontation with the culprit, resulting in the dropping of said watch. And the weapon? What could it be?
Jolly's position suggests they were hit with a blunt object from behind. Something with a decent reach and hardness to ensure... Of course! The candy cane! Right here! <laughs> impressive. Most impressive. The villain used old Jolly's cane? How horrible! Well, I am most certain that I know what the Sugar Gnome was doing. An untied gaze scattered across and a holiday hat and beard. Judging by these items, it's clear old Jolly was preparing gifts for us when the incident occurred. Oh my! Who could have done such a thing? That's exactly what we're going to find out. Everyone, please move to the dining car where we will question you. Hmm. Was a sugar gnome feeling cold? This room is intolerably hot. My cheeses will positively melt away. Hmm. Such a familiar beginning. Too familiar. Indeed, it follows my story almost to the letter. A victim, and the enclosed space of the running express train. Then, according to my manuscript, the antagonist will be... Miss Linzer Cookie, please proceed to the dining car. Um, esteemed detectives, I'd like to make a proposition. You see, my services and expertise might be very beneficial to the investigation. Perhaps I could assist you? Pardon? With respect, Miss Linzer Cookie, a famous crime story writer you may be, but reality is far from fiction. Mm hmm, it will be an... with you. What? But Detective Cheddar... Oh, marvelous. I will do my best not to get in your way. Besides, I already spoke to all the passengers yesterday. I'm sure you will find my remarks most helpful. That is what I call an excellent point, Macaroni Cookie. Let us accept Linzer Cookie's proposition. But Linzer Cookie is a civilian. This is strictly against procedure. Procedures, procedures. We are on a running train, after all. The brass doesn't have to know. But we agree on one condition. We are in charge of the investigation. Oh, give me a break. Fine. But FYI, I won't be held responsible if anything bad happens, Detective Cheddar Cheese. Well, then it's settled. Now it's about time to start detecting. don't have a suspect at the moment, but keep in mind that one of us here is the culprit. We will begin with checking your alibis. <laughs> don't mind me. I simply volunteered to take down everyone's replies. Old Jolly Case, Record 1. Vampire Cookie brought in for questioning. <clears throat> Alibi. Was present at the tree lighting ceremony at the time of the incident. Confirmed by Angel Cookie, Carol Cookie.
You're saying you were at the tree lighting ceremony, huh? Was I? Oh, yeah, uh, I guess I was. Uh, I, I had too much grape juice last night. talk with old Jolly about the grape juices they carried? They seemed so tempting, did they not? Well, well, well. So the poor sugar gnome was a mere ops and a sip of fancy grape juice, huh? Classic. What? What do you take me for? We, we made a deal. Old Jolly would let me have a little taste for a small donation of coins. That was it. They even made me sign a formal agreement. Uh, here, sugar gnomes and their no-nonsense ways. Hmm. Was there anything else? Did you notice anything unusual yesterday? Cookie looked quite suspicious talking to old Jolly over supper last night. It's in honor. Vampire Cookie was in the lounge car drinking juice with other cookies. His alibi is pretty solid. Jolly Case, Record 2, Angel Cookie. Alibi was present at the tree lighting ceremony at the time of the incident. Confirmed by Vampire Cookie, Carol Cookie. Understand you were at the tree lighting ceremony with other cookies. Is that right, Angel Cookie? Of course! I was trying very hard to fly to the top of the tree.
talk about with old Jolly over supper last night? Oh, hi! Hmm... We talked about... Well, I asked if old Jolly could fly. It's the sleigh that allows me to fly around! Easy peasy! Ho ho! Yes, that's all. Did they now? <laughs> I didn't do it. <laughs> Listen, pal, you do have something shady about that squint of yours, if I'm being completely honest with you. I get that. Sometimes. What hides behind those pale blue eyes, I wonder? But Angel Cookie's alibi is solid as well. What can you tell me about Old Jolly? While everyone was waiting for the ceremony to begin, Creme Brulee Cookie and Old Jolly had an argument in the hallway. Noted. Next, Cookie. Old Jolly Case, Record 3. Carol Cookie. Alibi was present at the tree lighting ceremony at the time of the incident. Confirmed by Angel Cookie, Vampire Cookie. mesmerized by the twinkling ornaments. I even came up with a new poem about love and peace. Would you like me to read it? chance to talk to the sugar gnome? I sang them a song to cheer them up. After all, old Jolly had to work during the holidays. Sometimes a little song filled with warmth and joy can bring peace to the troubled soul. Yeah, in our case, eternal peace. <clears throat> Do you remember anything suspicious? Anything catch your eye last night? See, Sparkling Cookie looked so sad when Old Jolly refused to drink. Why would Old Jolly refuse? Cookie, Angel Cookie, and Carol Cookie were together, and their stories perfectly align.
Next cookie, please. Old Jolly Case, record four. Creme brulee cookie. Alibi. Played the grand piano in the banquet car. Confirmed by none. You're saying that no one else was there in the banquet car who could confirm your alibi? No one at all heard you play. I suppose. Everyone else was in the lounge car, enjoying the ceremony. Besides, the lounge car is far more soundproof than the rest of the train. I doubt anyone heard me. Cookies mentioned your little argument with the victim. Can you elaborate? It, yes, I was a bit upset because of my sheet music. Hmm. No alibi, no witnesses. Besides, creme brulee cookie was so openly aggressive towards old Jolly. Next cookie. A creme brulee cookie is the only one so far without an alibi. His motive may seem unclear now, but the same can be said about anyone. Alright, why don't we continue after a small break? 